Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, this is a small talk about firewalls, security, and the Internet of Things. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on discussing where all of these items intersect and what it means for you as a consumer, uh, potentially as a network administrator as well. So again, I'm going to primarily be gearing this talk towards the small network administrators and general home users so you have a better understanding of the security implications of the Internet of Things as it rapidly evolves. So the Internet of Things is, the new, is a new digital frontier and much like the old Wild West, it has many unknowns and risks. So what I have here is this little kind of uh, highlight picture that kind of shows where it's anticipated the Internet of Things is going to go. So back in 1992, there were about a million computers online. Uh, by 2003, there are a half of a billion computers. Um, 2009 is the when IoT or the Internet of Things. Um, so that's what that refers to when I say IoT, and I'm going to probably use that for the rest of this talk. So the Internet of Things came about in you know 2009, 2010 with light bulbs. Then it started adding things like smartwatches, um, up to things like stoves, uh, toothbrush, even you know tell you what you're how you're brushing your teeth and your hygiene habits, you know, power appliances, thermostats, electric items, door locks. There are these ho a whole host of things that are now being connected to the internet. So as you can see, it's, just, it's rapidly exploding and there's all these new devices connecting to the internet and that's gonna present some risks. So what exactly is the Internet of Things? <clears throat> the Internet of Things essentially refers to the ever-growing network of physical objects that have an IP address, for internet connectivity and the communication that occurs between these objects and other internet enabled devices and systems. So as I mentioned, you know, door locks. Before, you know, you had to stick a key into your lock to unlock your door. <clears throat> Nowadays with a modern uh, internet connected <laughs> door lock, you can actually use your smartphone. You can um, you know, have it scheduled to when your when your smartphone gets in range of your door and it's outside the door, it unlocks your door for you. Um, a whole host of different things that can, uh, you know, be done with this this these internet connected devices. So it extends connectivity beyond traditional devices like desktop and laptop computers, smartphones and tablets. So it's a range of devices and everyday things that will utilize embedded technology to communicate and interact with an external environment environment all by the internet. So essentially, it's bringing non traditional non -tr items that are not traditionally connected to the internet on the internet for interaction with more traditional devices and even each other. <clears throat> so what is a firewall? Other thing that's part of this topic, you were talking about firewalls, security, internet of things. So firewall, um, probably people have heard this and they, they think of, uh, you know, a device like they see in a movie and they see a hacker say, I'm hacking through their firewall, I'll be through in 15 seconds. Well, what a firewall really is, is it's a network security system. It can be either hardware or software based, and it controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on sets of rules. So what's allowed in, what's not allowed in. So a firewall acts as a barrier between a trusted network, such as maybe your home network inside your home, you trust you know, your computers inside your home, um, untrusted networks such as the internet, we don't trust everything out in the internet and there's good reason we don't do that. Um, less trusted networks, like maybe you're at a, a retail uh, merchant network outside of a cardholder data environment. So, that's what a firewall does. So how does this impact you? So I know this might all be a blur, and especially if you're not a technical uh, user, it can be a blur. So high-speed internet right now, it's increasingly and widely available almost anywhere. So more devices are being created with Wi-Fi capabilities and other sensors built into them, and costs are going down. So essentially, you know, everything nowadays is being connected to your Wi-Fi at your home, your etc. The cost to make these things, it's plummeting. I mean, uh, they're being they're being smaller. You know, computers used to fill a room. Now you have a your your smartwatch can have more power than an old um, you know mainframe computer that took up an entire room. So there's becoming more prevalent. It's everywhere. So 
kind of think about some of the implications. So what if your alarm clock wakes you up at 6 a.m. and then it notifies your network connected coffee maker to start brewing a pot of coffee for you? And then what if while you were, you know, up in the morning, <coughs> um, you know, having your coffee after your coffee maker made it for you, if your smartphone checked live traffic data that's provided by other smartphone users to notify you of traffic congestion, maybe it's busy, or an accident, and then your smartphone automatically lets you know and suggests a faster route to work or wherever you're going. Um, you know, so these are some of the implications all these connected devices are going to have and how it's going to impact you. And all these changes are coming whether we want them or not. So IoT is already here in the form of cameras and people can pull up their, their home from a camera over the internet on their smartphone now. Lighting controls, you can you know, turn on and off lights, thermostat, turn up and down the temperature, door locks, etc. There's all these devices and every day new ones come out that are internet connected. Um, <clears throat> so, again, how does this impact you? So this is going to come with some new risks, right? So many of these devices collect personal information. The vast majority of devices collect information like names, addresses, dates of birth, credit card information. Again, you're probably like signing up for some type of service where it's connecting out to a remote server. There's a data link there where it's sending information over the internet to some third party. Um, so even worse is the fact that many of these devices transmit this information without encryption, and that's a huge, huge risk. Um, cloud services, uh, you know, which many of these devices use, so you're setting the data to a cloud, are also a potential vulnerability. Uh, think about what happened recently with the Apple thing it's, and all the photos from celebrities, right? So the data was out on the Internet, essentially, and the service that was providing that connectivity was compromised and data was stolen from these people. So as more and more devices you know, connect to the internet, we're sending more data here, over there, to this person's server, to this server, to this cloud server, you know, from this device to this device, it's going to open up a whole new set or new area that can potentially be attacked to compromise that data because it's flying all over the place. There's more and more moving around. And just like anything, the more and more trucks that drive across the country, the more and more chance you have of things being stolen, trucks in an accident and so forth, same thing. There's just you know more of it out there, so there's a bigger risk. So it's likely the majority of these devices act, don't even need this personal information to function, right? So does, does your light really need to know that it's, you know, Joe Smith's light and it's at this address? Not really. It, it shouldn't... You know, it shouldn't really need to know that. They don't need dates of birth for your to turn the light on and off. Um, but these companies that run these services and provide these services, a lot of them are in the data collection business. So you know they want this information. And that's where a lot of this stuff starts to intersect, as you're going to, as you're obviously probably starting to see. So as IoT expands, this data will become even more personal, and even will include health data. They do have internet connected health sensors now. So maybe you have a parent. Um, and you that's maybe has some heart illness, for example, or a relative, you can actually check their, their heart readings online and they, they can provide the information to a family member. But again, if it can fall into the wrong hands or become compromised, then somebody else may have access to that data. So in a recent study of IoT devices, 60% of them have had vulnerabilities that were directly tied to the user interface. So we're not talking about all the backend data transmission, um, the risk from you know cloud-based. We're talking directly interacting with the device. So these included like when you go to log into the device, for example, to like, access it yourself, Cro cross-site scripting, poor session management, and weak default credentials like admin and password. And a lot of them don't force you to change that. And sometimes people leave it as it is, and that again prevents, uh, sorry, provides. A method or vector of attack for you know an attacker so a large percentage did not use encryption when downloading software updates what's even worse some of the downloads that were tested could be intercepted and uploaded into a file system where software could be seen or even modified thus compromising the device so these devices by and large essentially are tiny computers and much like any computer you have in your desktop it can be compromised and made to do other things. So 
if they these if hackers or people can intercept this and send a uh, up that update to your device that then puts them in control of your device so it sounds pretty scary it does so the internet in and of itself is an insecure and highly risky place right we all know this once we start connecting devices that are not designed with security first in mind which the majority of these IOT devices are not it's extremely frightening uh, the devices may have an individual user ID and password but for the most part there's very little else they do for security um, and keep in mind so the more majority of these things are not designed with security in mind they're designed with ease of use in mind like they, they show you a commercial you know you can do this this and this and then ever talk about you know the implications security how do they protect the data what measures are in place you know are they encrypting it who has control what data are they collecting where does it go um, they don't ever focus on those things they focus on oh you can do this make your life e life easier they show you a person turning on and off a light they show all the positive benefits and the ease of use without focusing on a huge important portion which is how are they securing this system that they have so most likely hackers are going to steal your information the same way they're stealing everything else with a virus or a malicious application transfer over the internet except now with IOT they have an enormous attack service surface compromised of devices that do not have security as a primary concern they will use your compromised smart devices as an inroad to the rest of your devices or network Many of these smart devices, as mentioned, are in reality small computers. So, what this means essentially is, as you know, viruses and whatnot spread. People hear that, you know, that you know they get a virus from one computer can spread to other computers. Um, with the Internet of Things, these devices again, they're essentially small computers. So they can use now that we have all these different devices. Instead of just attacking your one, your laptop or your desktop that you have hooked up at your home, now they can attack, you know. They could attack your camera. They could attack your refrigerator. They could attack your door lock. Your, you know, any of these devices you have hooked up are a potential risk. And if they can take over that, then they can use that as an inroad to attack other devices inside your network and steal data. Because that's ultimately what they want to do, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So you can and you should take action to protect yourself, and you can take action to do that. <clears throat> so what can you do? First thing is you don't want to put IoT devices. You want to put sorry. You want to put IoT devices on a separate network or a VLAN. Um, net, probably the network administrator is in here. Know what that is? If you're not, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, it's a separate network for two devices for sets of different sets of devices to be on. We don't want to allow any non-encrypted traffic to communicate, right? We don't. We want to make sure we avoid that. We want to use different user IDs and passwords and use complex passwords. Don't use one, two, three, four, five as your password. Even though it's a great one from the Spaceballs movie, you don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> don't have your alarm system, your heating and air conditioning system, your camera on the same network as your PCs. If your PC is compromised, you don't want them to be on the same exact network and vice versa. Um, so if you know, one of those other devices is compromised, you don't want them potentially having access to your PCs. Uh, only communicate with your IoT devices over a VPN and secure your network behind a properly configured hardware firewall using both inbound and outbound rules that's really important and something that's easy to do um, in terms of the VLAN if you're not sure how to do that it's really technical what you could simply do is have two routers right you have two routers at your home one of them um, you connect your computers to and one of them you, you connect all your other devices to so you have two separate networks that way and routers nowadays they're cheap enough that you know if you're not technical and don't know how to program a VLAN set that up you can just use two separate routers and that will also work just fine so what's an attack vector we talked about so as I mentioned you have all these different attack surfaces right so this is your house simulated you have your router in the middle all these devices are connected right so you have network connected lights you can turn on and off, cameras, thermonats, maybe a stove, a smart TV, um, a door lock. All these things are potential vectors. If one of these is compromised, they can jump around inside your network and potentially impact other items and steal other things, right? So that's what an attack vector is. Think of it like if this is your house and you had all your these doors. Think about if your door, your, your house, instead of being a walls, it was just a set of doors. 
you only have to have one door broken into to get inside the house and have access to everything inside of it. Um, kind of the same thing. It wouldn't be very good security to have a house that was entirely made of doors, which as we add more and more internet connected devices or IoT devices, it's more doors being added on or more ways into your network. So how does a firewall help? A firewall, think of it like a 50 foot high concrete wall around your house with a big steel gate, with a one inch thick steel gate or uh, you know fence or gate right there as the one entry point. So once you're in, you have access to everything, but the only way in is through this firewall. So you, you have reduced the entry points, no matter how many devices you have, down to one entry point in and out of your network. So you can have a VPN that will allow you in and then disallow everything. So this is talking about an inbound firewall, right? Um, most people think of a firewall as keeping things out of their network. It's not that is true, but it also has other functionality, which we'll talk about in a bit. That's very overlooked and neat and should not be overlooked. So we want, you know, protocols, things used by your camera. We don't want them publicly exposed. We want you to have to be inside the network to access those devices, right? So say you want to access them from outside your home. Um, the, the best way to set this up is to firewall everything else out only allow a VPN in. So it's one way in, one way out, that's it. And once you're in through the VPN, then you can access these other services. Um, a lot of businesses do this. In fact, if you work for business and have remote access, you're probably familiar with VPNing into network to gain access to resources. It's very simple to do, even on, at a home level, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. So this is what we look at as a... Uh, an inbound firewall, right? Prote preventing things from coming inside your network. So what about internal threats, right? So as mentioned, when they think of a firewall, they think of something that keeps traffic out of their network. However, a firewall can control outbound or also known as egress traffic as well. So many system administrators overlook this potential threat. And with IoT becoming more prevalent, this attack, this attack vector is growing, should be a period, not a question mark, but it is, it's growing. So how does an internal threat work? After all, if a firewall can keep an intruder out, then we, we really don't need to worry about what's leaving the network. We just keep everything out and we should be good, right? Not, not so. Entirely. Um, consider a coworker with a compromised flash drive, right? So they bring in a flash drive. Maybe they did some work at home. Um, they plug that thing in. And guess what? It's infected. And then all of a sudden, that great firewall you have that keeps things out of your network and unwanted security threats, maybe the protocol that threat uses is, is blocked at the firewall, but somebody walked in with a flash drive and that's bypassed. Um, so another a piece of hardware ships infected. It's happened. You, you, bring, you get a computer out of the box. Um, <laughs> it's infected with a virus out of the box. With the Internet of Things devices becoming more and more prevalent and a... And a large focus is not placed on security, it's very possible that some of these devices are going to come with um, security threats on the device itself when you hook up to your network. How about a malicious email attachment? You know, something like that, that somehow makes it in. Uh, employee opens that and all of a sudden, you know, somebody outside the network has access to your network. Um, how about even a malicious employer data theft? Um, that's something a lot of people don't th think about, is what about an employee who intentionally is trying to steal data, maybe to provide to a competitor. Uh, maybe they're leaving and they want to take a client list with them, for example, right? Um, so it's, it's data theft. That's bypassing the firewall. That's an inside person trying to escape with data. So a firewall can help in those cases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole host of different scenarios that you know can cause an internal threat to bypass that firewall to get into the network, right? So what's an outbound firewall do? Well, like an inbound firewall, it prevents traffic from leaving your network. So say you have, you know, everything firewalled off leaving your network except things that you know you use. Like say you have a certain server you use or maybe DNS servers, right? So some, so some Tom or Jane they bring in their flash drive, you know, totally innocent in terms of intent, right? 
they hook that thing up and it infects their computer and it tries to copy all of their documents off their computer remember a lot of things they want to steal nowadays it's data they're looking for information um, you know for for a whole host of reasons a lot of it is identity theft but could be corporate secrets etc so that Tom Dick Tom Dicker J Jane they plug in that uh, thumb drive it infects the computer starts to look for the documents and tries to send them out now what happens is your outbound firewall potentially can block that it tries to send it through some protocol and the firewall says hey I don't know this server I don't know where this is going I'm gonna stop that what your firewall essentially did is it blocked that malware from stealing your data and this can go with these internet IOT devices as well right so say you have a a camera that's compromised right it allows maybe people that you don't want to view the camera to view the camera um, by having this inbound outbound firewall you can actually prevent that camera from being able to send data outside your internal network which means they would not have remote access to it even if there was potentially security vulnerability of the camera right so they can't connect to the camera even though there's a vulnerability that data from the camera cannot leave your network um, so that's just an example obviously there's different things like lights thermostats but the idea and the concept is that you control what leaves your network as well and that's an extremely overlooked item and outbound firewall so make sure if you're a system administrator you review that where your company stands where your business stands and what you want to do to try to address these items so what are some egress best practices or outbound firewall best practices by default we want to deny everything just deny everything this sets a starting point where nothing leaves the network without permission so it's the strongest security posture and then you would add rules to allow access to outbound connections as you want them to go out right so say you do want to have access to your mail server obviously you do but you only allow access to your mail server not any mail server so you're allowing specific items or specific servers access and what this does is it creates an environment where if something does infect your network it can't you know get out because it's everything is restricted except certain things so also restrict access to authorized sources only allow traffic from internal spaces you actually use so when your computers get an IP address if you know it's out on you space just block traffic it prevents you know a third party from connecting to your network segment and being able to transmit data out block traffic from VLAN workgroups or entire network segments they have no business establishing connection to internet servers for example you probably don't want your thermostat <laughs> you know being able to connect out to internet servers um, it's something that you generally just don't want to happen so this block at the firewall make sure that that's blocked um, just block that device entirely from connecting to the internet as a whole right and then you, you're gonna limit that that vector uh, block outbound traffic from internal servers that have no business establishing connections to the internet so maybe you have an internal file server to, right where you store all of your company's secrets all your data um, that server really probably shouldn't be on the internet so you want to make sure that a you don't map it to the internet but b you also block that server in your firewall from even going out to the internet you want to make sure that you're you're walling that server off um, also restrict internet accessible destinations so limit destination ports and addresses to allow outbound connections to only to those services for example if your employees use you know, certain email servers limit outbound and, and pop or you know IMAP connections only to those servers you know I'm using different servers you know make sure that you restrict DNS servers to your own DNS servers that you use you don't want uh, a rogue DNS server getting installed somewhere by, by malware and then redirecting traffic and a whole host of other nastiness so if you if you operate a proxy server in your business uh, or a proxy system that performs you know some type of content filtering only allow outbound connections from the proxy so block internet access except through the proxy so you know those are some best practices things to think about uh, the idea is you want to control all of the traffic that leaves your network not just comes into your network so that's it right unfortunately not the devices themselves still have a long way to go um, as, as I mentioned it's the you know internet of things devices it's you know all very new it's a uh, new 
it's like the wild west right it has unknown risks and many unknowns and risks and so forth so some of these devices communicate wirelessly via encrypted channels even the best security cannot protect against an unencrypted data being sent out wirelessly so with that in mind probably want to i i think as of right now the best or the most secure if you can use that terminology if you want to call them secure iot devices are devices that are only wired right they're wired in they're not broadcasting things wirelessly we can control at the firewall level what has access to what um, so keeping devices updated to the newest firmware is also going to be very important again these devices are going to be talking back and forth to each other um, it's you know there's probably going to be lots of updates for these devices to enable them to do that so it's going to be important that we see it as a even in the home or as a network administrator, you stay on top of that. However, you should also focus on limiting your attack vector through proper security protocols, like we mentioned. And to give you an idea how, how prevalent some of these hacks are, um, computer scientists at University of Mission hacked into smart traffic lights with nothing more than a laptop and basic radio broadcast equipment. And this kind of goes back with the wireless portion here, right? Um, hackers at a Black Hat security conference compromised a Nest thermostat in front of a live audience, again, using wireless. I think there's there's a little bit of a, a trend here. All these attacks seem to be wireless, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, even Dick Cheney, this is great, he, he had a, um, a pacemaker. He specifically had the wireless control of the pacemaker disabled because there were attacks proven that, that were fatal attacks you could make on a place, pacemaker. It's actually true. Um, so the BBC also recently assembled, you know, uh, a set of security experts and let them loose in a home full of smart devices. In short order, they had cracked the security of every single one of them. The one that people really got concerned about was the microphone on a smart TV. Um, basically, they were able to bug a living room through it and use the camera to watch the people through the camera in their smart TV. So. If we wall these devices off, if you wall your smart TV off from sending data out to the internet, guess what? That device, even if it did become compromised, um, it's not going to be to send data out to the internet. Um, and a refrigerator was also used to send spam email. Uh, basically, as mentioned, they're small computers. This one ran Linux. And everybody says Linux is the most secure. It is, as long as you patch it. It's a very secure, great operating system. But like any operating system, no matter what it is, you still need to have proper security protocols and procedures in place. And the people who made and designed this refrigerator didn't do that. Um, so the, the <laughs> spam, they were using this person's refrigerator to send spam mail. They were using it as a relay to send spam mail. Absolutely great. So with IoT becoming more prevalent, the risk of data theft is even greater. Hackers aren't just looking at your individual PC anymore. They're looking at all of your personal property, right? Everything is now to get at your identity, to get financial information, to steal your identity, to get more money. Right now, it's a multi-trillion dollar industry, and that's very true. So it's not it. What we want to focus on is what we can do. We talked about you know, how some of the items and best practices to secure your network. As it is, it's a wild west. However, um, even back then, you, know, you could try to be secure and take proper procedures and protocols in place and make sure that what you did carry the lowest risk right and you may want to potentially not implement these iot systems right until they are more secure and they're more mature but if you do implement them you want to be aware of the risks and what you can do to potentially mitigate any damage to yourself um, or your business so i hope you guys found this little talk useful and informative uh, I thank you for watching. I will also be following up with a video on configuring outbound firewall rules on the edge router light. Again, I like that device. I have one. It's a great piece of equipment. And I will show you how to do that on edge router light. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, leave comments. If you want to add anything, leave comments. Please keep them constructive. If you do put in false or, or, or comments or comments that are negative and don't really carry any constructive weight and they're just used as flaming or trolling I will delete them uh, also you know <laughs> without saying no racist or otherwise um, comments that are really unwarranted thanks for watching and have a great day